All right, everybody. Hey, welcome to Basics of Magic, basicsofmagic.com. Uh, myself, Will Roberts, and my fellow host, Rudy Tinoco, from The Magician's Forum, and that's themagiciansforum.com. And we have our guest in the wings that you're supposed to pretend you don't see. It's called Misdirection. He is one of the top guys of Misdirection. Uh, but we'll talk about him in a moment. He's not really there. Hey, Rudy, how are you doing? I am doing absolutely fantastic. I couldn't be better. How about you, brother? You know, I'm good, and I always wait to see how you're enthusiastic you're going to be when you say that, because you always seem to be so enthusiastic that, I, you know, I, somehow I feel like if you were being held over a volcano, you'd still be like, I'm cool. So uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that's happening. Oh, but Rudy, you're the, you're the sacrifice for the day. I'm good. So, hey, Rudy, I wanted to start off actually asking you a question, if you don't mind. Surprise. Sure. I hope I have an answer. What is the Magician's Forum? Because I keep saying that, and are people out there interested in magic or into magic? I'm sure they want to know, what is the magiciansforum.com? Thanks for asking. Well, the Magician's Forum is a community of magicians who... Um, we're a small community, about like 800 folks, but these are people passionate about magic, but also in the conversations that we have one another, very respectful, very friendly atmosphere where you don't really have to worry about trolls obliterating you for asking what really amounts to a simple question. There's no grammar police or any of that. So I just think it's a really friendly, kind community of very, very knowledgeable and talented magicians like the one who is sitting here on the screen with us. So... Uh, uh, yeah, thanks for asking, and we welcome anyone to join us. It doesn't take much except an email address, and you'll gain entrance into the community. So I hope you'll check it out. Wow. Uh, I'm sorry. You said social media where people aren't attacking each other and being rude? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's magical. Yeah, that's yeah really no magical. doubt. No uh, doubt. All right. Hey, basicsofmagic.com, as you well or, or may or may not know when you check on the site, it is about the basics of magic, whether it's a uh, simple sleight of hand with cards, coins, mentalism tricks, things that you can do at home, but uh, don't be disparaged. Uh, we do have a shop there if you're interested in getting some of the basics of magic in there, some really great stuff. And as we have our guest on, uh, perhaps we'll be adding in some of the stuff that they have to offer, um, looking at trying to add a book section which I have like 800 of these really old books from the 1800s and early 1900s Library of Congress. So that's kind of fun. Uh, just a lot of great stuff. So if you have any need, of course, this is all brought to you by Zucchini's Tricks and Things in the uh, infamous Cannery Row in Monterey, California. That's the Steinbeck country, which I originally started as a magician back in, oh, back in 91, or no, I'm sorry, 80, 81, uh, I 1981. Can't even remember. What's that? It's old. You can't even hardly remember the date. Yeah, I was thinking this is your last show, Rudy. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, oh, you know what's really weird is our guest just backed up and it looked like he fell from his chair. But it's... <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, Rudy, you take the helm from here. Who is this man in the middle? I know, I know. You know, I'm really... I'm always excited when we have the opportunity to talk to magicians. We have some really great folks on the show. I'm particularly excited about Michael Breger. He's a, a personal friend of mine. He's a member of our Magicians Forum community. He allowed me the opportunity to uh, partner up with him on a recent project for Penguin Magic. But he's an award-winning columnist for the Linking Ring, which I have here. Oh, love the it, Linking Ring. Auto Magic. Ooh. And the fantastic uh, stuff here. I perform regularly an effect of his called, the name escapes me, but it's from Dancing with the the Cards. It's Third Attribute, which is a really sneaky, I think a magician fooler, and not that we set out to fool magicians, but the stuff that, <laughs> the that that Michael uses in the effect that he produces and publishes in his books, like, uh, Expert at the Odd Table, which is a recent uh, release of his, just deeply fooling, being real, Really uh, incredible principles, Gilbert principles, stuff like that to accomplish great magic. So, Michael, I am so glad that you decided to, to join us today. Again, I, I really appreciate you and your magic and your friendship, too. So, hey, in the introduction. say his name. Say his name. I'm going to uh, cue the audience. Michael. 
Brager. Michael W. Brager. I don't know if the uh, right, but that Michael crowd? Yeah. That crowd. M M flip 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 it around. It's an M. Michael M. <laughs> Michael M. Brager. Awesome. I think there, I there saw him. I think I saw him blushing as you were in the beginning talking about how he walks on water. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I was well, I was going to say that I would blush, but you know what? With these fake backgrounds, I would just blend backwards. <laughs> yeah, I really fall thought into, he. I thought you took fall a fall. The... I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> Uh, Michael, uh, uh, welcome to the show, please. Thank you. It's good. It's nice to be had. Wait, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm still happy to be here. Yeah. Uh, l let's, let's just get right into some of the questioning. Uh, some of the stuff that we always ask magicians, and especially how long have you been doing magic, as a, you know, even, even as an amateur? When did you start? Oh, when when did you start? 1981. Yeah. I go. I can rewind the tape back a little further than that. It's uh, it's kind of it's kind of the typical story. Uh, Mark Wilson's Magic Land of Alakazam oh. was still on TV, and it wasn't in reruns. Yeah. And I was just as a little kid, I was just enthralled by it. And it was the the big box illusions that got to me. So not having any knowledge not having any magic kits or experience i went to my mother's dining room table <laughs> and i and i took the felt pads off of the table and you know they fold right they yeah. folded the so i would i would fold them into thirds and quarters and pretend that they were mark wilson big box illusions and then then dad gifted me a it was probably a mr misto gilbert magic kit um, I do remember I graduated from that to the Ray Walston, my favorite Martian wow. magic kit, Jeez. which uh, if, if I only had, I loved, I loved that thing. And uh, then in, uh, I grew up in Philly. I still live in, in the Philly area. Cantor's magic shop, Jack Channon's shop, we're still alive and well. And, uh, and listeners or viewers, if you don't know who uh, these people are, these old brick and mortar magic shops, you need to go and, and, and look them up. You need yeah. to know who Jack Ch Channon is. Do a little bit. Listen, Will says he's got uh, 8 million books from like the Library <laughs> of Congress. And, and, I've, and I've only written five, right? <laughs> I've not written uh, 800 of those. But th these were guys that were absolute stars in the field. Yeah. And, and while the stuff that they did, you might read them and might not think they're too relevant today. I would contend they're as relevant today. And what you would learn is you're learning the basics of magic is anything that you would see on Penguin Magic or Vanishing Ink. Sure. You'll see upgraded versions. Today's versions and the pattern will be a little bit different. The scripting will be a little bit different. Right. But go, go back to that. So um, did magic, uh, uh, did children's parties uh, with a, a good friend of mine, Paul. We got we got eight dollars for doing kids parties. Wow. We did 20, 25 minutes, eight bucks. We split it. We each got four, and we took it and went to Canner's Magic Shop and bought yes. more magic that we could take to the. And then I'll tell you a funny. Will you'll appreciate this one. In uh, in middle school, they had a uh, it was like wasn't like a talent contest, but it was the spring show was sort of like a talent show. So Paul and I did, and it was the only time I ever did like stage illusions. So we decided we were going to do some stage illusions, and we called ourselves, and you'll appreciate this, the great Zucchini, oh. with with his assistant Artie Choke. Uh, and the, <laughs> the joke the joke was the joke was we never said who was Zucchini and who was Artie Choke because we both switched who was doing the illusion. So oh one, one of the things we did we we bought UF Grant's Victory Carton illusions, and what Grant who was an old magic dealer from Columbus, Ohio, uh, back in the World War II days. And he put together this pamphlet, I think it was like two bucks or three bucks to buy it at the store. And it had about 10 illusions that you would see like Copperfield, like big, sure. big illusions, but they were made out of cardboard cartons. Oh, I so you would, go, you, would, you would go to an appliance store and say, give me the cardboard box that the, that the uh, stove came in. And you would take that and spray paint it and put stars sure. on it. So, so we did... We did the thing with the swords that put the swords yes. in the box, the sword box. So the swords, we went to the hardware store and got broomsticks. Nice. And we sharpened the edges of oh them my. with sandpaper. Oh. Painted, <laughs> paint, painted them silver. We never we never claimed that they were swords, right? But you, you know what? This was sort of the beginning of doing the comedy magic that I like to do now. 
Uh, and Paul went into the box. I pushed the first sword through a broomstick, and he screamed at the top of his lungs, you missed me. <laughs> and then and I, would push the, I would push the next one in, and he uh, would, on the inside, grab it and push oh, it all the sure. way through so it flew out on the other side. And I'm telling you, you know, if I did stage magic today, I would absolutely positively go back to the routine that we created for that for that silly little thing. But it was, man, that was a lot of fun. That was yeah. that was just so much fun. So then, uh, and you know, uh, school intervenes, life intervenes, college intervenes, and uh, I stayed interested in magic, but it sort of died off a little bit mm -hmm. until I think I was a senior in college when a friend of mine who was a manager at a steakhouse in downtown philly said yeah. we're trying we're trying to bring some more people in the bar and keep folks who are in the bar there longer would you mind coming by on the weekends and oh, doing Lord. some bar magic so i did through uh, my senior year in college and graduate school years i did bar magic uh at uh, at the uh, the little steakhouse in philly and you know Throughout the years, I kept interest. Uh, you know, professionally, I'm a management consultant by uh, by trade, and I deal with uh, with boardroom people of Fortune 100 companies, and have a ball, uh, even when we're doing some serious stuff, taking them aside, particularly if those that sort of know about me. And you know, they'll ask me to do a coin trick, which I don't do, or a card trick, which I do plenty of, or to do a little bit of mentalism. And I've done some corporate parties as a result of that and kept my fingers in all of that. But the management consultant keeps you awfully busy. It yeah. also keeps you on airplanes a lot. Yes, it does. And I decided to leverage my time on the airplane to take right. some of the ideas that I've had in the past and put them down on paper. Uh, the folks at uh, the editors at the Linking Ring uh, reached out to me. I had reached out when Sean Farquhar, the great magician Sean Farquhar, yes. was yes. president. I reached out to him and said, you know, all of a sudden we're starting to see tons of these self-working card tricks and self-working magic DVDs and videos being put out. And some of them are really, really good and some of them aren't. Uh, you know, maybe you should do something where you can have somebody curate some of the stuff. And in fact, if you go back and look at the old magazines, the, the great magic magazines of the 50s, and the yes, 60s, I 70s. Love there's, I love them too. And there's some awesome stuff in there. Great some stuff. of it could, could be called self-working, which means, and here's my lesson for today for beginner's magic, self-working means slight light or no slights. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as self-working magic unless you're watching a Disney film or Star <laughs> Wars. You're watching stuff up on the screen that you can sit back and enjoy and you know it's not real. It is magic. It's magical, yeah. right? But but self-working magic does not exist. No. You, They're tricks otherwise, right? Yeah. To make a magic, you have to do it. It's all about performance. It's all about attitude. It's all about structure. Rudy talked about some of the things that I like to do, and he calls the magician fooling. And thank, thank you, Rudy, for the compliment. But let me tell you the secret behind all of that. I look in the old magazines. I, I look for concepts and ideas, and I take them and I revitalize them. Or I'll take a couple of them and blend them together in a way that you just wouldn't think could possibly work. And I structure a strong presentation around it that makes you forget that you're even watching something that might have some type of mathematical principle or something working underneath. In other words, it becomes a five minute, three minute, four minute, three Absolutely. act play. Absolutely. There's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the the mantra that I that I use. So yes, uh, the uh, the articles they asked me to write the articles in the linking ring. I've been doing it starting my sixth year uh, with with, with uh, the auto magic column, uh, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. I've had books published, uh, some stuff out of the magazine, and some original stuff. Uh, as Rudy said, Rudy's helped me with a few things. I've I have workshop a couple of the ideas with Rudy. And a few of the friends in the uh, the friends that I've made in in the magicians forum, and a few friends that I've made uh, in in magic elsewhere, and uh, here we are. Yeah. 
Well, I'll tell you, um, interesting thing. First of all, you talked about uh, when you started out and all the fun stuff that uh, you, you kind of created on your own because that's what we do. Again, Basics of Magic a lot is because we're all stuck in our homes <laughs> now. The fact of the matter is is that, you know, you want to grab a salt shake. You, wanna, there, you don't have a trick <laughs> that you buy at a store at your home. And yes, you can do Amazon, you can do lots of different things, but you know, it's the stuff that you kind of like start off with the principles of magic and being able to do it. And then from there, you kind of get so, uh, what, what do you want to say, you're locked in or, 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 or yeah. uh, you know, you're excited, passionate about it. But one thing I want to tell you is that I remember doing a, a, the same thing with boxes. And what happened was that I made <laughs> one where you would take, um, Hold on a second. There we go. There's Rudy. Um, I actually uh, I used to do one where you had two, the two different boxes that went inside each other. I had a, a, a lovely assistant. It was probably my uh, middle school years. It did the same sort of thing. And like you did, I was taking stuff at my parents' house and changing them and doing things and didn't make, parent, my, make my parents very happy. But, but uh, by all means, you were doing things and creating it yourself. And the other one I did was a table float. And I made, mm -hmm. my father said, I'll make the table for you. And he made this two by four table and we put fringe around the si uh, sides. And of course it had the V that had the mm -hmm. wood that was in the middle. And then mm -hmm. you would take it and pull it back and the mm -hmm. girl would be floating. The biggest problem was it weighed about 45 pounds. <laughs> because my dad welded it out of, uh, you know, really strong square tubing is like, this is awesome. What do you think, son? I'm like, well, I'm going to really get buff lift. I could only do it like once because I couldn't drag it around on my VW bug. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I, I, that's funny. Yeah, that's I, funny. I appreciate I appreciate that stuff. Hey, Rudy, throw a question at uh, Mike in regards to, I don't know, some of the stuff that uh, you're thinking that beginners might like. I think he's there. Yeah, but he just froze. I'm not sure what's going on with my... I, I live in Forest Grove, Oregon, and it's like I'm out here in the stick, so I apologize for the silly, silly uh, connection here. So I've kind of missed some of the conversation. I'm not sure what you had already asked, um, I, I didn't ask much. I just told him that I was making tricks on my own as well. I'm sure as you were in right. the beginning because not everybody could get to a magic shop. But my magic shop was in Chicago. I, I lived in or the suburbs at that point called PJ's Tricks and Things. So I <laughs> remember that the smell and just the whole being. Yeah, there. how about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, distinctly remember, you know, and being in, in Philly, we're, you know, an hour, 20 minutes away from New York City. Uh, so, you know, going to, uh, the Tannen's magic shop, yeah. you know, going to the mm -hmm. Valhalla of Tannen, which is you know, behind me. Uh, I mean, you, you'd go to the, it was, I think it was the fourth floor that, you know, yeah. when it was, when it was on Broadway and, and you'd go in this small elevator, the doors would open and the doors would open right into the store on the elevator and it would be packed. It would always be packed. And the, and the cool thing, and, and one of the things that I, I tell you, I miss them. One of the things I really like about your idea of doing this stuff on the website, and it's in the live tutorial stuff, is in the in the old days, uh, going back to the brick and mortar magic shops, you would you would meet other magicians and sometimes really famous magicians. Yeah. And they would and they would look at you and they'd say, Hey, hey kid, you know, what hey, are you doing kid. here? Hey kid, show show <laughs> hey, kid. Hey, hey, hey kid, show, show me something. Uh, right. and uh, and 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 it was a, a conspiracy of secrets. They were they were not they were not very quick in sharing secrets. Uh, but if you did something and they liked it, whether you fooled them or not, You're they right. would share a secret. Yeah. And they, when they would show something to you, they wouldn't show you a trick. They would show you a method. They would say, you're trying to do uh, a double lift. You're trying to lift two cards, make it look like one. You know, you're doing it away. It's, you know, you know, you need to work smarter, not harder. Here's the way I do it. Here's how I put my fingers, and, and they would they would help you with all this stuff. Yeah. They would teach you methods, and you'd and you'd go home and take the methods, and they put the methods together and start to formulate your own tricks. And they really fostered creativity Absolutely. that you just don't get yeah. anywhere. And, and it's a shame. Yeah, you don't get it, and also they fostered mentoring, and that's one of the yes. things that I've made clear on the site. Rudy, throw a question uh, at Mike if you don't mind. I know you're waiting. Yeah, you're well, sitting there. Yeah, sorry about that. You just me right. mentioned mentoring, and that that one of the things I always curious about 
uh, when I meet a magician or anybody really who's involved in some something artistic is you, who is it that influenced you? You talk to somebody like Mike Powers, you'll say mm-hmm. Ed Marlowe or me, yeah, it's Marlo. uh, Harry Lorraine. Maybe even for you, Will, or maybe I don't know to what degree Will Rogers. Well, you mentioned earlier, I don't know how. Well, but who, who's who has influenced but... you the most? My, oh, I want to go. But uh, in terms of your magic, uh, Michael, who have been some of you the major influences in your life? Well, going back to the early days, you know, Mark Wilson uh, was an absolute positive uh, uh, influence on me. I, I, I never met the guy. Right? I just saw him on TV. Um, and the, the, the other mentors came from the books and the magazines that I read. So, Rudy, you talk about Harry Lorraine. And, uh, you know, reading Harry's stuff from Close Up Card Magic and uh, um, reading uh, stuff by John Rockerbomber. Um, now, again, going into Cantor's Magic Shop, I know I met some of these guys. Uh, Mark D'Souza, who's from the Philly area, was another Cantor's kid, and we're about the same age. So I know we ran into each other at, 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 at Cantor's. Um, you know, and, and a few other people that I that I knew I ran into. You know, the guy who ran Cantor's at the time, Lee Gray, was a stage magician. He used to do, I think he had a bird act. Uh, and it was uh, certainly manipulation. He was on the old Mike Douglas show a lot. Oh, wow. You see him, Merv, Merv Griffin, and, you know, he did a lot of that stuff. Uh, but he was never, he was he was a sales guy to, to me. He was the guy behind the counter at the Cantor's, whereas he took uh, D'Souza and a few other people under his wing. So, the, you know, the, the, the mentors that I've had, Rudy, I can honestly say have been more in the last, say, 10 years mm-hmm. when I really started to get serious about going back to the things that I love to do, the magic stuff that I love to do, and, and start to ask, how can I get better? And here's the other thing that I've learned for all you budding magicians out there. Uh, magicians now, for the most part, are very accessible. You can get their email address or contact them through, you know, link in through, uh, through Facebook. I'm, I'm mixing metaphors there. Or, or <laughs> through, uh, through, through the Magicians Forum. Yeah. There's some great, fabulous, professional magicians on the Magicians Forum. And, uh, you know, as, as long as you're nice and polite, and some of them, you know, need a little bit of, uh, you know, you have to slap them on the back a little bit. Uh, but it, it's okay you, if you're respectful to them. They will absolutely positively help you, and they'll answer questions. And, and I couldn't believe when I started to write the column for, uh, for the Linking Ring, all these guys that I just idolized and I read their books over, they started to write to me. <laughs> it's like, holy crap, they're, yeah. they're writing to me. Right, right. You know, I read, the, I read their books. They're asking me questions about stuff I'm teaching them, and, you know, they were everything to me. Well, let, so, me ask you, yeah, let me yeah, ask you a question yeah. in regards to you said something very important, I think, that people need to understand is, is that would you both say that some of the most important or the in order of appearance things that you like about magic is the community? Uh, the I don't, I don't want to say brotherhood because I'll get all the sisterhoods and, and uh, upset with me. But uh, would you say um, all of the camaraderie that you get that we're talking about something that is special that we're talking about something where someone doesn't you go yeah what about this? W- would you say that I mean of course doing a trick and having the response of an audience is amazing, but wouldn't you say that the other parts about the community and something special that you hold in it with a group of people is one of the top things, Rudy? Absolutely. And I think really anything, right? Well, that's why you have Star Mm -hmm. Trek conventions or Star Wars conventions, you know, shared passions about a particular thing. Part of the fun is like-minded individuals coming together to share their passion. And that's why, you know, again, back to to beat the dead horse, but the Magician's Forum, that's the whole reason for that is to create Mm -hmm. and foster a community. Again, where it's important, where people respect each other and the differences. Uh, but yes, I think it's absolutely, absolutely important. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead, Michael. And, 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 yeah, and, and you know, magic has a colorful, a long, colorful history. Yeah. Uh, and it's a very, very well documented, long, colorful history. Particularly the last, say, 120 years, when magicians actually started to write books and share, share some secrets along the way. And, and what's really interesting, you know, people will tell you, I might even be one of them, that there may not be anything new under the sun in terms of magic, but that might be in terms of magic method. Because uh, there's probably only 
25 methods that, that are ever used in some way, shape or form with, with magic. You know, so being able to, to have a community of interest with lots of people that, right. have, that have read a lot of stuff, who've seen a lot of stuff, puts you in touch with these guys who died 100 years ago. I know. And put, they put you, I mean, you feel like, you know, you read some stuff that uh, uh, Theodore Anneman wrote about, uh, about mentalism you know, literally a hundred years ago, or some stuff that uh, uh, Hofsenzer wrote about some card magic a hundred and fifty yeah. years ago, right? And and while it's really tough to read the prose that they write, <laughs> given the way we 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 understand English now, when you get past the flowery language, you really understand these guys and can get in their heads. And and you know that's that's really cool. You speak about um, you know standing on the shoulders of giants. Which I think was um, was either Isaac Newton or, or Einstein. One of those one of those physics one of those physics guys said, said that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know you really feel that when you're when you're looking and creating effects of, in, in magic. You're right, Rudy. The community of interest is very strong, and being able to be in a community where there are no rules except be nice. That's right. Um, yeah. yeah. And, 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 be, and be willing to share. Yeah, and, and keep the secret and have – well, I mean, that's one of the things for sure that has kind of uh, become lax. And Rudy and I have talked about it on previous shows, and I call it crotch magic that you see on Instagram where they don't really show yeah. their faces and there's no presentation. Yeah. And they're like, look, I showed you a trick. Now I'm going to tell you how to do it. You know, uh, we're, that's one of the reasons why I crafted this because I will come and tie you up in a hog tie and use my 25 pair of handcuffs to keep you down so you don't show everybody how to do it. But uh, yeah, anyway, Rudy. Yeah, but yeah. at the same time, we do want to offer people the opportunity, for example, who are watching this right now, to learn some magic. And, yeah. and uh, I know, Mike, you said that you'd be willing to show us a trick. I've been able to see your work and I know how deeply fooling the, the magic is. Created. But uh, if you are able to demonstrate something for us here, what Will will do is we'll record the yes. the inner workings of it, and then those um, who are interested can learn effectively. It won't be explained here to sort of hide that yeah. method from we'll, the general public, but we'll give it we would later. treat it yeah. as yeah. something. So, you yeah. have to perform if you need a, a, a spectator, Will, yeah. because, again, my, my Internet connection here being so ghetto, I would hate in the middle of it. <laughs> yeah, well, 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 yeah. Rudy, we're hearing about every every nineteenth word, but I heard. Here's what I heard, Mike. You are great, and I don't need to hear anymore. You know, so, that, thank you very much, Mike. Have a good day, everybody. Uh, that's the show. That's Just that's right. Mike that's is right. great. So so I'm I'm going to show you an effect. Okay. And you guys are going to participate. I love it. And and everybody out there watching in internet land. If you have a deck of cards handy, you're going to participate at the same time too. Okay. So I am going to let me let me see if I can work some magic with Here the little goes. camera upstairs. Hang hang on a second. Wait, whack. I got it. I think I got it. I got to do bingo Try again. Oh, there. Wow. Now I, I wait. Except I gotta get. I gotta get rid. Yeah, I, see I gotta get rid of the floating the, in the middle of your office. Yeah, there, there we go. <laughs> oh, floating in the air. All right, now hang on a second. Oops, wait a second. Oh, darn it. Let me uh, let me zoom in a little bit. Yeah, we're here. zooming in there. Okay. And the mouse, I can move aside. Again, while Mike's setting this up, basicsofmagic.com at the bottom, of course, and now also themagiciansforum.com. And if you want to get a hold of Mike, you can check him out here at this email address. He is a very hard to get a hold of guy unless you hit his email, but please don't send him any. Uh, you know, lots and lots of stuff, just something kind about his stuff or maybe questions about how you can get his books he's written. Go for it, Mike. Yes, I've got a very thin skin, so uh, so please uh, please be please nice. be very careful uh, not not to insult me. I, I tell that when anyone wants to uh, review one of my books, I'm saying I'm happy to have you review it, but only if you say something nice because uh, I'm very sensitive. I'm very sensitive. I cry very easily. So 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 gentlemen, so you've got uh, let me let me get rid of this so I can see Mr. Rudy in the. Uh, I feel like I the should back. have the same thing. All right, title. so you guys you guys have cards. You guys have cards? Yes, sir. Yes. You, you, you and TV Land ha have cards? All right. First thing we want to do, well, cool, cool. You've got yellow yellow Jerry's Nuggets. Yep. 
Yeah, the only the only good nuggets are yellow nuggets. That's right. uh, take take the cards, right? I hear you, I hear you shuffling away there, Will. Uh, do do a good shuffle. Now, you don't have to do a fancy barrow shuffle like like Rudy does all the time. I and told me. That. And told me to put on my big boy pants and learn how to do a farrow shuffle. Go. Right there, there you go. The but the nice the cool butt shuffle. Every other, awesome. one. Every other one. Right. You can you can do a riffle shuffle. You can do an overhand shuffle. But the point is, I want you to make sure that you've got a really really good mix. Right. And let's let's see if this shows. Let me. And I'm using I'm using big index jumbo index cards. Yeah, for us. So old you see. People. Can, can, yeah, there you go. Can can you see? Works great on the internet. Can you see that they're 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 mixed well? Sure. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Right. I just want you to know that we have a really mixed up, uh, and we don't we don't need the jokers. And I know that there's another joker in there somewhere. So, any case, take your cards, give them a really good shuffle. There it is. Make sure make sure you've got a really good mix. All right. And now the next thing I want you to do is we need ten cards. We need five reds and five blacks. So after you give it a really good shuffle, go and take. Ten cards. There's red, I have black. Space. Two, three. Well, we're not doing scrolling oh, here, so yeah, there you go. One, two, three, four, five, four, oh. and there's another red. So ten on each color. Yeah, we need five, five reds, and oh wait, five reds. Sorry, sorry. Five, five reds and, and five and five blacks. Let me just uh, put this aside over here. Five reds and five blacks. Okay, two two yeah. two piles, five reds and five blacks, and put them in two piles like like this. I got them. Put them in front of you. Okay. All right. Now, now I don't know whether you have the red cards or the black cards. Which side you have them on? I keep them face up so you can see. You can and and take take the piles right and give them a really good shuffle. So you we shuffled the deck right and you pulled out ten cards at random, mm -hmm. and now you're going to give the you know you're going to give the reds and the blacks. Little piles a, a shuffle, right? Okay. Cool. Yeah. You guys are so you guys are so good. All good. right. Now, good. now you can start. Now you can start on your left, or you can start on your right. Okay. Right. And take one card, and put it in the middle between the two piles. Right. Okay. Left mm -hmm. or right, and then we'll go to the other pile and put that on top. Okay. Right. And then go back to the first pile. Okay. Right. And you're going backwards and forwards. Gotcha. Until you until you've used up the two piles, you've created a pile in the center. And the pile in the center are all alter alternating cards. I'm sure glad it's only yeah. five, Mike, because I would have gotten confused after that. Well, I made Rudy told me you had uh, ten toes, so yeah. uh, I, I, I figured Mentos. Sorry, <laughs> that's right. Right, don't drink any uh, diet Pepsi because <laughs> uh, we'll we'll see the volcano effect. All right, so so you know we shuffled the deck. You pulled out five reds, five black cards we shuffled them all up we mixed them all so you got a good mixture of cards right okay. and we just mixed them. we just alternated them right so now the colors are all mixing okay so now take the little pile take packet and turn it over right face down because now yeah. now I'm, I'm done with you looking at the stuff at least for the next minute it's a little packet that you have i want you to cut the cards and you can cut as many or as few as you want many or as few as you want all right and and, and because i know rudy you like cutting cards so much you can you can cut it you can cut it another time. Well, look, uh, I just cut one card, but but that's okay. Cut and complete the. You do it as many times harder. as you want. Making me work harder because okay. Rudy likes two cuts. Uh, <laughs> there, there you go. Well, you you know, well you you don't have to follow Rudy's lead. You can do whatever oh, I, you like. I, to I always do. <laughs> okay, does. okay. Because now I'm going to rely on the fact that the two of you and folks out in Internet Land we'll be doing things a little bit differently because here are the options. Take the little packet that you have in, in your in your hand, right? And take spread off the top two cards just like this. Don't take them off, just move them off like this. And then flip them over two and of let them? them fall right. Two of them, two of them, two, I just one, did two. It. And just fold them over like a book, like you're turning the page of a book, okay? Now don't look down at the card too long because quantum physics, I learned this from Mike Bowers, Quantum physics says if you're looking at something, you ruin the experiment or something like that. So take the cards. So, as soon as you for the, cut them, cut them. So whatever card you have to turn face up. How many you cut? No, I don't. No, I don't care how many. So you put cut. down. You, cut, you can cut one. It. Just just cut cut them into the cut them into the middle. Yeah. It's okay. Be okay. Now, these now, parts. now now you're gonna now you're gonna do it again, but because because I like you, you can do two cards or four cards. 
four, oh my goodness, six cards. And here, if I do six cards, as you can see, I'm even going to be flipping, and you're going to do the flip over thing. I'll be flipping over, separating those two face up cards. So that's cool. I like chaos. So I'm going to go two, four, six cards, right? Spread over and flip them like a book. Is that what we should do? Yeah. Nine. Six? Yeah. You four, can do two. two four, four. But you can do four. I'm going to do five. I'm feeling No, no, no. Do, two, do two, 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 four, six. Oh, I see. Two, four, six. Because the, the odd numbers. <laughs> You know, the, the odd numbers, right? I mean, seriously, we have to keep the balance of the cards to make them easier to Wait, work. I got to ask the you odd a numbers question. We can, we can get when we cut them. They're going to be really mad at me, Rudy. So I, d I haven't done that yet. Now, I, am I turning it over this way to do to, to do the flip over book? Look, look, it, it, yeah. let's spread spread off the top two, yep, right? Yep, yep. Or the or two or four or six, right? Yeah. Just spread them off like this. And as a unit, as a got unit, it, flip, them, flip them over like that. I got it. Thank you. Okay. Now I just did it a third time, Rudy. If you want to do it a third time, <laughs> Will. If you want to do it a third time, I Will. I would won. suggest. Will. I would suggest that you that you go home <laughs> at this point. I suggest. I say. What, what, I'm what time is it? It's, uh, you know, it's rip. it's four four thirty here in the east. Yeah. So so that means you're probably two or three hours past At's drinking time out on yeah, the west yeah, coast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now again, you can you can. Flip two, four, six cards. You could do it again if you want, but because you did, you need to cut the cards again. Quantum physics says you can't look at that top card, and I don't care if another face-up card shows on top or not. Okay, you got it. You got to cut the cards again. Okay, now now you'll like this part. Well, I'm not going to ask you to flip over two, four, six cards or eight cards. I'm going to just say take the whole packet, the whole darn packet, flip the whole packet over. Okay, just flip the whole packet over. All right. All right. Now, if the spirit moves you, you can cut that too. But only if the spirit moves you. I'm moved. Okay. All right. And then, and then, because the spirit's still moving me to do some flipping, I'm just flipping all over the place today. Uh, you two cards, or four cards, or six I'm cards. You can even do eight cards, two cards. All right, that's fine. Let's do two. We do two. But don't forget, as soon as you do it, you got to cut them. You got to cut them. Don't want to look at them. You got to cut them. Done. Cut. You only have to do it if you don't want to. Okay, here's another thing that you don't have to do if you don't want. You can take the cards and you can flip them over again, but you don't have to do it if you don't want to. I'm going to be like okay. you. I'm going to be like All right. Mike. And then, and, then, and then here, you can take the cards and you can give them another little cut, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Do it. Yeah. Now, the whole, the whole point of this is, in the beginning, we shuffled the deck. You picked out Ten random cards. You disorganized all the cards in terms of orders and stuff. And this little exercise over here, as crazy as it did, you, you disoriented them, right? Some are face and me. up. And me. Some are face. Well, that, that wasn't too difficult. <laughs> Some are face up. And so, now, now take the cards in front of you and give them a little spread. I got one, two, three. I got four cards face up in front of me. Me too. Rudy, how do you? How many do you have? Four face up. Yeah, me too. Four face up. Oh, okay. you know, I got to tell you, that's really, that's weird. That doesn't happen a lot that, that all of us end up. And you in, in, in internet land, some of you may have like three cards face up. Some may have six. Some, I, I did this not too long ago. One person had one card face up. Another person had 10 cards face up. I mean, you're talking, and then there were a bunch, you know, like us that had four, a bunch that had two. But, you know, again, we all made different decisions along the way. Uh, Will, you flipped over two cards a few times. I yep. flipped over six or whatever. Rudy Rudy chose not to flip because he's got funky internet in, in, far, in Forest Grove, Oregon. It's the home of the funky internet. Yeah. So, okay, so so we got we all have four cards face up. Now, okay, now take the, the pile in your hand. Will, this is the easy part. Take the top card of the pile, top card, and place it on down on the table on your left, okay? Now take the next card and place it on the table to your right, right? The third card, face up or face down, whatever it is, leave it the way it is and put it on your left. The next card on the right and keep on going backwards and forwards until you've exhausted all the cards in your hand and you've dealt out all the cards. Oh, and then make the, make, make the piles re okay. really neat. Neatness counts, neatness counts, okay? Now, as you can see, I've got a bunch of cards. Some are face up, some, but I got four cards, just like you got four cards face up. One more, one more thing to do, and then and then the magic's going to happen. Then we're done. 
pick a pile. You can either pick the one on your left or the one on your right. Pick a pile and turn that that pile face. Just flip that one over. It's no really no face down because some are face up. Flip that pile uh, over. Okay. Either the one on the left or one on the right, and then take that pile that you just flipped, and you can place it on top of the other pile or underneath the other pile, whichever you want, on top or underneath. Okay? okay. Then flip, the, flip the whole thing over again and put your hand on top of it. Okay? okay? Both hands. Both hands, Rudy. <laughs> no, 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 just, no, just, no, no, you've got clammy hands. Just do one. <laughs> no, so 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 here you go. So I don't know about you. I enjoy the power of magic. I really enjoy the power of magic. And and having said that, Will, I'm going to ask you: Do you enjoy Do you enjoy the power of magic? I do, brother. Okay, brother. I need you to think of that sentence. I enjoy the power of magic. And I, say that sentence. Okay. I enjoy the power of magic. And pick one of the words, one of the special words in that sentence. Power. Power, power. And let's spell that P-O-W-E-R. There's five letters. So here's here's the cool thing about all this. Okay, you guys are what three thousand miles away from me right now. And I'm people a in further. TV. Yeah, okay. <laughs> people what are you in the in the Pacific Ocean? No, I mean uh, mentally, yeah. Uh, uh, okay. So so here we go. So power has five letters in it. So keep your hands covering the cards through the power of magic, because I enjoy the power of magic. I'm going to make exactly five cards flip face up and five cards flip face down, even though we all had four cards face up. Okay, so we have to do this together. We have to, you have to radiate through that prism of the internet. We have to say together, I enjoy the power of magic. So here we go. Say it twice. I enjoy the power of magic. Say it one more time. I enjoy the power of magic. Spread the cards and look at this. Look at what I got. Oh my God, you're right. And I have so, a flush. So let's, let's count them. One, <laughs> One two, two, three, four, five cards are face up. And not only that, they're red and black. But you you have separated the red cards from the oh, black dude. cards. That's, That's really awesome. That's but great. I got to tell you, I got to tell you something. Will, with your actors, sonorants, and the way you speak, and and Rudy, you know the, the the magic of the preacher coming through, and again through the prism of the internet, I got to tell you guys have really done something special because it came to me. The power of magic you enjoy it came right through the screen, and it smacked me right in the face, and it, it glanced off of my forehead, and it bounced onto the table, and it sent ripples all the way through the table. And remember that deck of cards that I picked my ten cards from at the beginning. You yeah. saw how random they were. The cards that have been sitting right here all the time. Look at this. All reds, all blacks, all separate. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Wow. <laughs> cool. Yeah, right. All right, everybody. Hey, Basics of Magic. Boy, Mike, thank you very much. And uh, so what we're going to do, folks, is uh, we're going to end the show here. Mike, come back to us. Get your face back on here. There you go. What a great trick. Hello. And then what we're going to do now is Mike's actually going to do the trick, and we're going to get the tutorial of this, and you can go to Basics of Magic. I'll give you the information when you see the full story on Mike and Rudy and I and our take on things. And uh, what a great trick. I love that. Thanks. Thanks. That's so really cool. good. And it's so pop right now. This is kind of what we've come to with magic is doing this virtually. Uh, yep. So to add to our arsenal, little tricks like this that can be done over yep. Zoom, Zoom or Skype. Zoom or Skype. Wow. Yeah. It's really great. Yeah, like, that was. And, and, and honestly, Rudy, that was the genesis of this. I wanted to come up with something that I could do. I was starting I'm starting to do some lecturing on on Zoom and and, uh, you know, I realized watching somebody do magic tricks on Zoom for more than 10 minutes, it's it's kind of boring. It's kind of uh, you know, and, and, you know, and, and, you know, at least with the magic lectures, you could do the trick. You can break it up with an explanation. You have questions. Right. But but something like this, you know, you have interactivity. You can have lots of banter. And Rudy, Rudy knows my magic well enough to know that the thing I like the most, Will, is I like the banter. I like the discussion. I, I you know, you, you may remember the old Groucho uh, Marx TV show. You bet your life. It was, it was right. It was a it was a, a silly little quiz show. Yeah. But what made it better than most silly little quiz shows was Groucho spent. 
20 minutes of the half an hour just going back and forth and bantering with the guests and right. telling jokes and insulting them and having lots of fun with it. And, <laughs> and, and to me, that's part of the performance structure. I mentioned the three-act okay. structure on all of that and how important that is to me. So if you rewind this trick and go back, you will see a definite beginning and middle and end because that's how I structure these things. It's, you know, Great. the old three-act structure goes back to the, to the ancient Greeks. And it's been around with us for thousands of years, which means there's probably something to it. Well, what I can tell you for sure is that what I've learned in this uh, half hour, 40 minutes of the show is, is that you definitely don't have a lack of words. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a pleasure. And Rudy, I know you feel the same way. Take us out of here, Rudy, and uh, say something yeah. important. Yeah, well, I just want to encourage people to really check out Mike's work. You can actually, you'll, you'll see he has stuff on, um, uh, what's it, it's Big Blind Media? Do you have actual? Yeah, Big, Big Blind there? Media and Pe Penguin and, uh, you know, all the usual places. Yeah, so I encourage folks to go check him out because there's some fantastic material in his in his books. Again, expert at the COD table, dancing with the cards. I don't. Uh, you might have to mention some of the others, Mike, if you have them there. Hold them up, please, because I don't want people to miss the opportunity to learn something. Okay. Excellent. Wait, Matt. wait a minute. I, I've got to. I've got to go into the overhead camera because, because otherwise everything is spelled backwards. You can see this, okay? No, it's, it's blurry. blurry. Oh, oh, it is. It is blurry. Wait, I gotta get. I gotta. I gotta get rid of it. Back on it. Oh, that that book. I love that book. That's the. Uh, my glasses are really bad right now. Choose the background effects. There we go. Okay. Audio, video, come on, Skype. <laughs> hey, it's, Rudy, it's slow. Yeah, they, why, while you're doing so, that. There, there you we go. go. Okay. There's an expert at the con table. Now, again, magical beginners yeah, might not time. know the joke. You might not know the joke here, yeah. but there was a book that was written a hundred and some years ago, which was the Bible for card magicians and gamblers called The Expert at the Card Table. Yep by S.W. S. Erdnates, a rather mysterious person. So he's now S.W. Ordfish. Uh, it's expert at, expert at the cod table. And God this book gave me a chance to do, uh, to do 15 tricks with uh, probably a thousand puns. Wow. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Influence Enza is um, a chance to do some uh, comedy mentalism. And that's an area, lots of mentalists, they all take themselves just so damn seriously. Just, you know, lighten up, guys, right? Yeah. You know, some comedy. And, and this was the title trick in the book, Influence Enza, is the one that Rudy and his lovely wife, Charlene, helped, helped with. And if you go on Penguin, you can have the opportunity to see the two of them perform this, this trick. Oh. And there's Dancing, Dancing with the Cards. Uh, this has that third attribute trick that, uh, that Rudy likes, which is uh, on Big Blind Media, the ultimate self-working card tricks, volume right. four. That trick is uh, featured in there as well. They do a terrific job. The Five Roads to Vegas, which was my first book. And Back to the Launching Pad, which was my second book. Wow. Um, so I got, I got more, I got more ver verbose. You know, 46 pages, 50 pages, 110 pages, 150 pages. Wow. But I have, a good, I have a good time writing. But I'm glad they're big. I love the fact that they're big. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you, you know what? You know, <laughs> you, you know what? They're I sell them as eBooks. You oh. can get the you can get the physical copies if you want. Sure. Um, uh, but yeah, you know when you get the physical copies and you can open them, you can spread them out. Yeah. Lots of photographs in there that help help you uh, help you walk through the uh, the stuff. And and none of it's and it's very little sleight of hand. There's practically no sleight of hand. Oh wow. Uh, so you know I've tried to structure the basics of magic. Right. Yeah, so the basics of magic, again, the most important thing that you can learn is presentation, presentational mm -hmm. style. And you'll get you'll get ideas about how to do it. You'll get the full scripts. You'll get the actual scripts that I use when I perform these. But make them fit you. Don't just do it verbatim. Do it to understand them, but then make them fit you. Yeah. Michael well, once again, yeah. Yeah, Mike, thanks again for taking time out of your day to hang out with us. It's really been fun, really yeah. fun, lightning, yeah. and I uh, really think that, well, first of all, I just want to thank you for being a, a good friend as well. Uh, so thank, just, thank, thank you, Ray. So thanks so much, and I'll hand it over to Will so you can close us out, my brother. Yeah, you know, uh, thank you guys, both of you, for coming on the show, and Rudy, of course, doing the show with me. I, I hold you at the highest esteem because 
Um, you never have any uh, lack of words as well. Um, but you always, I'll, I'll be honest with you folks, uh, the Magicians Forum, that's themagiciansforum.com, really uh, has such a great great space uh, for people who want to learn magic and do magic. And uh, I, I honor, I'm honor. i honored that Rudy does do this with me all the time. And so thank you very much for that, my friend. Uh, and then we're going to have to work on your internet. I'm kidding. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you have any more questions, of course, you can go to the site, basicsofmagic.com. I'll be put, doing a whole full story on about Michael and some of his books and, st and where to get stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, we would love to have you just click through and do that. Uh, I'll send you all the information and some other stuff and pearls of wisdom. Plus, at the end of this, you can go onto the site. At the end of the story, you're going to see a link you can go to to see how he actually did this trick. So with that being said, I hope you all have a magical day and thank you Rudy thank you Michael and everybody uh, get out there and practice your magic because if you don't it's really not magic all right have a good day and uh, see you sometime soon